Hey, Coach. Mentioned on uh, Saturday you had open competition at kicker. Have What's the response been like uh, today so far? You know, we've had quite a few people uh, pay some attention, reach out to us. The biggest thing is I want to have um, – uh, which we did this at other stops I've had where uh, basically you'd have guys walk on um, <clears throat> and uh, and you can only do it when you're allowed to use a ball, which is during spring. And uh, so like, you know, so the guys that accumulate in January, you say, all right, we'll see you first day of spring and you check out what they can do. But, you know, we're in season now, so we can check it out if their NCAA papers are right. And um, anyway, we want to um, – uh, have a have a a pile of kickers that are available that uh, we cultivate, develop, and <clears throat> over the years, uh, most of my kickers have been walk on guys that have developed and improved to the point uh, to where they become the starting kicker. And uh, I remember one guy, and and I have the utmost admiration for him. Um, you know, starting right out of high school, he went to the kicking tryout. Uh, and we cut him. We cut him for like three years. And he kept working, kept working. And, you know, we cut him for like three years. He was a starting kicker for like two years for us. And it was really quite impressive. And he's, uh, <clears throat> you know, just became deadly accurate, grew, uh, grew a little bit. And so anyway, I just want to have a pile of kickers. And, uh, and I want to develop them um, over time so that as they improve and elevate you know they have a chance i've also had a situation where the a walk the walk-on kicker played ahead of the scholarship kicker which i'll do that without any hesitation because um um you know whoever plays the best and helps us uh be successful is the guy we want out there hey mike how does some of the kicking issues maybe impact play calling moving forward uh, when, when you're maybe in the red zone or, or in kicking range I don't know. I'm inclined to go for it on fourth down anyway. Or uh, they probably need to be a little more aggressive with it. Should have been to begin with, you know. And I, uh, you know, shoot if you if you if you look back, uh, we used to go for it on fourth down more than anybody. I probably ought to get back to my old ways, you know. Coach, clearly this year you've had several games that could have gone either way, and you guys have have not gotten the lucky breaks in some of them, but. Just going into the late stretch, down stretch of your second season at Mississippi State, are you pleased where this program is? Is this program about where you thought it would be going into your second season? I just keep, you know, I keep, uh, I don't really do it that way. You just keep scratching and clawing, trying to make sure you're getting better every day. I think we're improving. You know, I think that, um, <clears throat> well, uh, we've already beaten several teams nobody thought we were going to beat, but. You know, I think that, uh, you know, we just got to keep getting better. And there's the worst of it is there's uh, several within our grasp, you know, that, you know, a play away, uh, one play away, you know, we win the game and we can't lose sight of that. But, uh, you know, <clears throat> I thought our guys uh, played extremely tough, tough environment, you know, all the, the, the things that went into it. Um, these guys all had uh, off week before we played them. And, and then they're loaded with seniors running around with like 96 scholarships, star 79. Uh, but the good news is, is our guys are going to be here next year and they're going to learn from this game. They're going to be here for a couple of years. And, um, you know, some of these guys aren't going to be there next year on those other teams. Good afternoon, Mike. Um, who would kind of be, I know you kind of alluded to this a minute ago, but who would be your starting kicker, I mean, if the game were today? Uh, I don't know. We're going to check it out this week. And um, have you spoken to either of your guys that uh, played on Saturday about your post-game comments about the, the kicking tryout? And are you concerned that they've uh, impacted their confidence? Or do you think it kind of gave them a chip on their shoulder? You know, I don't know what it did. But uh, the thing is, is that there's a ball and you kick it. And it really doesn't matter if, uh, if a bunch of seven-year-olds are watching or if, uh, if um, <clears throat> you know, uh, uh, five million Mongol warriors on horses getting ready to shoot uh, their bows and arrows at you because, um, you know, I mean, you, you, you approach the ball and kick it. It's as simple as that. Uh, but I do want um, <clears throat> I do want to have that depth, you know, that um, uh, we developed. And I just got to thinking about it that we hadn't done that. Uh, we hadn't done that here. And 
<clears throat> you know, it's just kind of automatic, you know, as they would, they would come through and, you know, we'd, oh, there'd be a list of about uh, 40, you know, and then and some would uh, kick it worse than you would think, like worse than you can, for example. And, um, <clears throat> well, okay, so, but some were even worse, trust me. And then, um, and then, uh, and then some were quite remarkable. <clears throat> and those you'd keep around, kick drills, and then they'd work, develop, and then two years later, boom, there's your starting kicker, you know. And those open tryouts worked at Texas Tech with Matt Williams. What was that experience like finding a, kick a kicker from the halftime contest, and what do you think of how he did for you guys? Uh, Matt Williams was um, wasn't really a byproduct of that. I mean, <clears throat> you know, it's not really personal to these guys. I just want to have the uh, a, th a, th a thicker force to draw from, you know, if, if we get in a bind. But um, uh, <clears throat> Matt Williams was even more interesting because we had a number of them that uh, became our kickers there at Tech, uh, walk-ons, the vast majority. <clears throat> Matt Williams, uh, we'd scholarshiped a fellow that was struggling. And then <clears throat> Matt Williams is, uh, this is the contest, you know, the, <clears throat> the third quarter contest, and we're playing Massachusetts, I believe, and it's early in the season. And, uh, <clears throat> well, here comes the guy, you know, and they've had that contest, you know, if you, if you can kick it 30 yards out, <coughs> <coughs> you know, a student, then you get uh, free rent, you know. And, uh, and you know, and the, the ball, of course, would go all over the place. And, <clears throat> Matt Williams in uh, just regular shoes, tennis shoes, uh, <clears throat> one steps it, it goes straight up and through, like the type of thing where um, <clears throat> if you just had a center and a holder and nobody blocking the defenders on the line of scrimmage, you would have still made it because it went up right away, you know. And uh, <clears throat> so I said, go get that guy. You know, I mean, what, what does it hurt, you know? Stick him in the pile here. And then, um, so the equipment guys ran him down, found him, got his information. He came by the office, and then it turned out he was eligible that year, right then, that year. And uh, so about two weeks later, he's, uh, we're playing number 10 Kansas at Kansas, and he kicked, he hit nine extra points that day. How about that? Nine in a row. So uh, we're pretty thrilled with that. Coach, so far, what are you seeing from Auburn, uh, especially on the defensive <coughs> side of the ball and, and kind of looks that they show? I think they're good. You know, they just, they're just – they're talented guys. They're not uh, <coughs> super complicated or elaborate. They're t t talented guys that, uh, you know, are physical and they get after you. Mike, with the special teams kicking aside, uh, you've had you know a couple punt returns this season and some penalties uh, even in that last game. What's kind of been the overarching issue there with the special teams unit, and, and how do you kind of try to fix that? You know, with three games left. Yeah, I don't know. We got to just be more disciplined in there. You know, I mean, uh, nobody works on special teams more than we do. We just got, you know, the, the the two last week that I can think of. I can't remember what all one one was. We hit a guy in the back, which was just stupid. And then the other thing is uh, we jumped outside, which that's dumb too. Uh, there was maybe another one I can't remember. It's uh, obviously Harson's first year in the SEC. I mean, you're only one year removed from your first year as a head coach in the conference. What was kind of your biggest growing pains? You think for being your first year, and obviously, you know, last year being a COVID season, but COVID stuff aside, what was kind of your biggest difficulties year one? You think? Well, all those interruptions were the worst thing, you know. Was, you know, and then the other thing, and it's—I don't think it's lost on anybody, but you know, the, there are those out there to try to make things as joyless as they possibly can, and they did. They successfully did it. And then um, uh, the other is, um, uh, I, you know, the, everybody wants to, everybody come into the SEC and jump up and down and say, well. The, you know the SEC's uh, special by some gigantic margin, and it's so much different than where the other where you were before, or whatever. You know, 
and uh, and uh, yeah, I don't want you to go away empty-handed because I mean I think the 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 energy and excitement is unique because uh, the proximity of the SEC is relatively close, so the fans. Uh, <clears throat> get integrated to the point where they all know each other, they spend time with each other, they see each other from one year to the next, and and it really is quite exciting. But um, when it comes to the football part, um, you know, I mean, you sit there in a dark room, you watch film, you eat bad foods, you drink coffee, you dip tobacco, and you and you and you sit and you uh, try to figure out how to how to get after the other guy, and, and you know and and uh, guess what? His defensive tackles this, but his uh, uh, but his safety's only that, and so it goes. And and then on the other side, well, their quarterbacks this, but you know, the running back, we think we can do something uh, something with this. And you sit there and scheme and grind away, and then <clears throat> you uh, try to have a, a great week of practice because I think that's the biggest thing is a great week of practice. And then. Uh, you fire it away, and, and you know you'll find it's uniquely similar to uh, the SEC in this way, to the Pac-12, the Big 12, uh, whatever conference Boise was in at the time, because they keep changing the name. And uh, so, uh, I, I would I would think that uh, that he finds it uh, eerily similar. And uh, Bo Nix, a guy that you saw last season, uh, how have you seen him kind of improve in the last year? What do you remember about him when you played him, and what makes him dangerous as a quarterback? I, he's got some mobility to him. You know, I mean, this conference is full of great quarterbacks, and not to take anything away from him, but, you know, he's going to present similar challenges to <clears throat> the others we faced uh, this year, you know. Yep. Uh, Jaden Wally held two one catch for three yards against Arkansas. He hasn't had a 100-yard receiving game yet this season. Is that just a factor of having more depth at receiver, or has he – he not made the leap you might have expected from year one to year two. Well, I think I, I think uh, uh, Ford's done a really good job taking some of those catches away from him. You know, he had a chance to have two more this last game, um, but I think uh, uh, you know, for, for, as Ford emerges, you know, uh, Wally's kind of in a dogfight for reps to see which one he gets, Ford gets or Jameer gets. You know. <coughs> You mentioned a couple of weeks back that this was kind of a one-layer team in terms of depth. Did you see it more as a two-layer team in terms of depth, or where, where's that depth right now? We're trying to get there to that. Um, I don't know that we're there yet. Um, you know, I th depth's kind of relative. Like last year, we're like five layers deeper. Um, but um, ah, yeah, we're pretty we're pretty thin. But you know, the thing that's exciting is we've got a lot of people that are sophomore or less that are playing pretty well. Yeah. Cole Smith again at right guard in that game against Arkansas. What are you kind of seeing from him in the past couple games, and, and do you anticipate him getting some more playing time moving forward? Yeah, he could. He's He's been on the list the whole time as far as and does some good things, very enthusiastic and, uh, and uh, very enthusiastic uh, out there and aggressive. And so I do think he brings some energy to our unit and, and – uh, you know, but like everybody, he's got to keep getting better. He's another guy that's pretty young, too.